So my name is Gerard Kreiner. I'm professor and founding chair of the Department of Thoracic Medicine and Surgery at the Lewis Katz School of Medicine, Temple University. So COPD, as many know, is a huge problem in the United States and the world. It now is the third leading cause of death in the United States, will soon be coming the third largest cause of uh, death in the world. Well, COPD means that patients have dyspnea or shortness of breath. And that is the most significant limitation that affects patients' quality of life. So if we could do something to alleviate dyspnea, we would do something to improve patients' quality of life, their social function, their work productivity, not only themselves, but also their kids, their spouse, uh, and perhaps uh, those that uh, surround them, their friends and social interaction. So bronchoscopic lung volume reduction using an endobronchial valve targets the lobe of the lung with the most emphysematous destruction and also probably the highest volume or near highest volume because your, your ability to improve the patient's outcome is taking tissue that's diseased of high dead space, reducing its influence, its negative uh, influence on the lung respiratory mechanics and cardiac function and basically allowing more room for more viable lung tissue to expand. The th lessons that we learned from the 20 years of bronchoscopic uh, lung reduction in the form of endobronchial valve placement has finally started to pay off, that we can identify the patient group and use techniques now that we can duplicate the benefits and the effectiveness of surgical outcomes at much less morbidity and mortality. The improved trial corroborates and substantiates other data that shows how important it is to recognize that hyperinflation has a negative outcome on patients' um, physiologic function, their quality of life, and even their survival. One of the most important findings from the IMPROVE study was demonstrating that HRCT can appropriately select patients not only on, based on pattern of um, emphysematous targeted lobe destruction and quantitative assessment of volume size, but also really um, identifying patients with enough fissure integrity, greater than 90%, that can have effective um, low bar occlusion and volume reduction. So the IMPROVE trial had the primary outcome at six months of about a 100 ml improvement in FEV1 in the group of patients that was treated with the SVS system compared to control. There was a marked reduction in dyspnea. The MMRC at six months was 0 0.6 uh, reduced in the patient who underwent treatment. The degree of air trapping was less. The targeted lobe reduction was about one liter less in that group. The RV to TLC ratio was 4% lower in that group. And the overall physiologic measurement of residual volume was about 500 mLs lower in that group. That related to improvement in quality of life. It was about 13 points lower in the SGRQ compared to control group, which is almost threefold the minimal important clinical difference. So I think the recent clinical trials have shown that endobronchial valve treatment is a important, novel, and really is going to become a part of the standard of care to consider in patients with advanced emphysema and hyperinflation who have collateral ventilation negative status and who have, whether it's upper lobe or lower lobe, more than 40% emphysematous destruction in targeted lung tissue. The success in the IMPROVE trial with patients that were treated the most important thing that I encountered was patients having a marked reduction in shortness of breath. And I think in most cases, that's what makes a patient want to undergo an intervention that may have some risk because breathlessness is probably not only the most common complaint that patients with advanced emphysema and hyperinflation has, but it's the most important symptom that's refractory to medical therapy.